the shop for us somewhere sons And I'm very you were Needed someone to understand my ups and downs And that you were We're sweet love and a version Austin Giorgio competed on the hit NBC show The Voice. The music hasn't always been in the forefront of his life, and he is sure one of a kind. I first started singing um, when I was probably 20, uh, but I grew up listening to a lot of singers. So my father was a singer in a jazz band. So I would go with my mother and just watch me all these clubs, and then um, it didn't start until my grandmother wanted to see stuff online, so I just started singing. You give your hand to me, and then you say hello. But I, I can hardly speak. My heart is beating so, and anyone can tell. You think you know me well, but you don't know me. It's just like the music I love is a lot of old jazz music, so that's how it kind of started. So is it weird for you to be singing like kind of like old school music when you're young? Uh, I mean, it is and it isn't, just because like it's so normal to me. Like how everyone would sing like Post Malone and stuff like that. Like I'm just singing Frank Sinatra just because like that's what I grew up listening to. I mean, what's cool now is as an artist, I like to take that old stuff and blend it into modern music. So it's like, uh, for me, it's almost like I'm driving an old car with new interior. What has your journey been like to get to where you are now? Music was always something I kind of neglected. Because I'll be honest with you, I was super insecure with my voice as a kid. Because I like didn't hit five foot or 100 pounds until sophomore year of high school. So like everyone was like, oh, there's the cute little Austin. I'm like, thank you. Go home and cry. Yeah. So I never, my mom was like, go, go and sing with your dad. I'm like, no. So finally I hit puberty last week and my voice got deeper. And I'm like, I think this is what I want to do. You know, I'm starting to see things move in the right way. So, obviously, the voice was 2018. My name is Austin Georgia. Uh, I honestly just went down to Philly to go run up the stairs for the Rocky Balboa statue and to get a Philly cheesesteak. And they were auditioning in the city. And my mom was like, Georgie, go audition. And I'm like, I can't believe I just said Georgie. But that's what she calls me. So I said, yeah, uh, I guess I'll do it. So I just auditioned. You go through like a series of interviews. But like the whole process, like this is what people don't understand is unless you're like selected, unless they like call you and say, hey, you should come audition. It took like six months to do it from start to end, you know? Wow. So that's how that started. It was just going down to Philly to start going on The Voice. I always tell my friends when I was in the audition room, because you sit there in a, a similar room and there'll be 10, 10 people and they say, all right, Randy Jackson. And they'll come up and sing and they go, all right, sit down. And then they said, Austin Giorgio. I'm like, all right, here we go. Sang my song. And then uh, I sat down. And when they said, thank you guys all for coming. Um, if we could just have Austin Giorgio come back. I was so zoned out. Because I'm not even thinking it, I'm going to get through. I walked out. And they said, Austin, Austin. I'm like, yeah. He goes, come back in here. I want you to sing another song. So I just had no intentions of like anything happening. What's well, like the one thing that you learned? Like the most important thing you learned being on it? In regards to singing? Oh. I would say musically, the thing I learned is uh, to keep what you love alive, you have to make your own. So when I went on the show, I just loved all that old stuff, and that's all I wanted to do. I was talking to Kelly when we showed the show and all of them. It was like, okay, take what you love and make it new for a new generation. And that's what I'm doing. And that takes time. To, to tell you. It's not a sprint, like most things. So that's musically what I learned. I think as a person, as an artist, the thing I learned is it's uh, you have a lot of eyes on you. So a lot of the behind the scenes stuff is like, I get a lot of people, which might surprise you, that they write me letters of like, hey, I just want you to know I'm suicidal and like your charisma like really lift me up and I love listening to your stuff. So I write back and they just let me know like you have an influence, so like just be careful what you do. And that's why I wanted, I want to put some positivity into pop culture, even if it's a little bit. Cool. Yeah. And then, um, how has it changed your life? Uh, I think my mother is talking to me every day now on my ass. Can I swear on this? I don't yeah, need to swear. Good. So uh, there's that. And I think the biggest thing is now it's like all I do. So I just do a lot of shows, making music. Um, 
yeah, it's just it's bec it's become my life, you know. She's a good girl. Loves her mama, loves Jesus, America too. She's a good girl, crazy about Elvis, loves horses, a boyfriend too. Since The Voice, he has written and produced many original songs. But one of my favorite songs I wrote was called Tabletop, which was about my grandparents. And because they were like 15 or 16 and they were like strangers. And they, the song's about like meeting in the 50s diner and like falling in love, dancing on a tabletop. So that was really fun because it's like a story about two, two young people meeting. So that, that was like a fun one to write. So what is Shooting Stella about? So, Shooting Stella is actually the only song on the album Crooner that I wrote while I was at The Voice. And uh, I, I was halfway through, I was talking, the idea was like that innocent love of like seeing stuff, because everyone has a routine, like mm -hmm. no matter what you do. So the idea was that this person was going to the same cafe, the same coffee shop, whatever it was, and he kept seeing the same person. She might be on her way to work, he might be on his way to work. And uh, he was falling in love with this person always, but not having enough courage to actually talk to them. But it wasn't until halfway through the song that I realized it was actually about my sister and my now brother-in-law. Because it was, again, like, ironically the yeah. same setup. Wow. Yeah, I keep talking about all these weird, like, innocent romance. So I'm like, I gotta stop. <laughs> and uh, Broken Ballerina. Broken Ballerina. Yeah. Uh, that's a, I think that's a song for someone... Um, that's a tough song. That's like about someone that uh, wants to pursue the arts. Okay. So, I'll, so this is this is kind of the background of it. So I knew someone that was super into the arts, and as someone that wasn't, I would tell them like, you know, you should get a job. Like, you should not do this. Like, how? What are you gonna do with dance? And I was like so business oriented, and now for me to sit here as an artist, it's like, wow, what an ass. Like, how did I not see it? Wow. You know? That's, that's crazy. Yeah. So he's laughing over there because he's probably thinking, what's he going to say? Why well, is it like an ex-girlfriend or something? No, it's, yeah, there's just, you know, there's just some <laughs> personal things to it, you know? Okay, um, Stardust. <laughs> Stardust. That's another cafe song. I got to get out of these freaking cafes. <laughs> <laughs> that one's another one. Okay, so this, like, I had this envisionment. Whenever I'm in New York, I always envision, like, walking like past the coffee shops and looking into the glass and you see like that one girl like with the bun up in her hair like doing her couch work but you know she's there because she wants to see like a cute guy or something so like it's like this girl is like a hopeless romantic i don't know and maybe like she's trying to fall in love but she can't ever seem to find that person and to be honest with you that was me i would always go to coffee shops like one in the morning to work i was only going there to like try to meet someone or talk to someone because i'm not like a i'm not like a bar guy like i'm not a guy that like wants to talk to all these girls at bars. It's not me. It's coffee shops. It's coffee shops. It's like the casual settings. Okay. You know? Yeah. I guess so. She's like, you're weird. <laughs> but this summer we've got a single coming out called Walk In, which you heard. Yeah. And so that, that that's uh, that's coming off an EP and that one we're getting a lot of promotion around and that's like my baby for 2019. Oh. You know? That's awesome. So, yeah. Did you like it? Yeah. She's okay, like, no. <laughs> it was decent. You're the place where we started talking. Do you ever stop? And how often they think of our memories that do you even really care? Because I do, I do. And what's the best part? About what? You are a big musician. Uh, many people like you trying to pursue your dream. Oh, thanks. Honestly. Because whether it's someone like you or a young fan that says, I, I want to be a singer, like anything I can do, that's the stuff that's like really important, you know? Yeah. And what's your advice to young people? For what? That want to pursue their dreams. I'd say if you hesitate, then don't do it. But otherwise, just jump and do it. Oh, yeah. That's good advice. You just got to jump. Just take the risk. Yeah, I think there's a moment where like, when I quit my job, it's like, oh my God, this is like... You start free falling for a little bit, you know, yeah. it's like, oh my god, this is different. What are your future plans? Future plans? Uh, just shows, music. I think what I'm super excited about is, inside of this first time announcing it, 
it's not that big. But anyways, I really want to make an album uh, with collaborations, but all like hip hop growing twenties. Pulse, but like I have a good understanding of the culture with a lot of bar owners around upstate New York, as well as all these cities I go to. And like the vibe is in the next like, couple of years, like that electric swing is gonna be slowly coming okay. in. You'll like notice it. It's like, my, I don't know how to describe the sound, but it's like a, I don't know, it's like a hip hop y swing. It's cool. It's like cool for like a club scene. Anything else? Um, tell me about yourself. Oh, I'm not telling you about myself. <laughs> you can learn more about Austin and his music by going to his website, austingiorgiomusic.com.